Sure, sure. Uh, well, first, thank you. Thanks and welcome. Wow, mm -hmm. all over the world: Germany, Australia, England, all over the U.S. and Canada. Wonderful, so great, and all the kits look really great. The outfits look fantastic. The uniforms, the equipment. Uh, you know, it's humbling. It's gratifying. Really neat. So, Dan, last night uh, during the screening, you you mentioned um, the work of your great grandfather, Dr. Sam Aykroyd. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that harkens back to the spiritualist era, mediumship, yep. seances, and I believe it was your father that would peek into some of these seances, is that accurate? Yeah, my dad wrote a book, History of Ghosts, I think you can still get it on Amazon, Lowdale is supposed to digitally release it, but I believe there are copies left on Amazon, and many of you, you I, I know, have ordered it and, and read about it, yeah, you know. <laughs> Um, your podcast is quite popular and you probably have treated it before, yeah. What happened was, like, in, in the 1800s, like in the, between the 1840 and, and the turn of the century, you know, a lot of religions had been at work in America. You had uh, Protestantism, you had Catholicism in Maryland, you had Mormonism uh, work its way across. and. And kind of, you know, people were a little burnt out in the Bible Belt of upstate New York with, with conventional religion. And they were looking for something new, something to believe in beyond just the dogma of a conventional uh, religious stricture. So uh, they started to, things started to happen up there uh, where they were more open-minded about uh, perhaps, you know, that there's something beyond life and consciousness can survive and life can survive. And the Fox sisters in Hydesville, New York had a little home there. And things started to happen, rappings, knockings, and the sisters began to respond to them, and the knockings would respond back to them. And they excavated in the basement after some time, after this went on, and found a body there, skeletal remains, of someone they figured was a salesman who'd been killed by one of the owners of the, the cabin. And they called him Mr. Splitfoot, and in fact, he would, they toured with him <laughs> and did stuff in arenas all over the world. And you can do it on your search engine and look up the headlines, Fox Sisters, in France, Fox Sisters, you see them uh, touring as stars around the world. Now, at the end of uh, of their lives, Margaret Fox said a lot of it was fake, faking, and she was using her foot, you know, because sometimes they, they lose their powers. But uh, I, I, I think a lot of the Fox Sisters' uh, occurrences were quite genuine. So from that was a whole, just triggered a whole community up there in Lilydale, New York, of people who believe in mediumship and believe in the, in the, in the afterlife and the survival of consciousness after death. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm from yeah. Lilydale. And you That's at the crazy. floor. Are you really? Yeah. Yeah. That's are you uh, are you uh, gifted or no. You, no. <laughs> no? But you can go to your neighbors and get yes. a reading. Yeah. That's right. No, it's great. It's in Chautauqua, New York. Yeah. It's a beautiful part of the world. A lake there and everything. A mm -hmm. wonderful uh, uh, you know experience. If you've never, uh, if you want to go to the best mediums in the world in the summer, they all gather there and you go to their cottages and pay and they all have a registration number and they're all very very gifted. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you wrote the foreword to that book, correct? I did, yes, yeah. My dad did all the research, and it was because we found my great-grandfather's journals. He was the re reviewer in town of anybody who was coming through that, had, that claimed to have a psychic gift, a, a medium, a levitator, a precipitated painter. Uh, you know, they, and he would say, no, nah, that, that's a fake, that's a hoax. Oh, there could be something real here, and he'd write it up. And uh, he wrote it up in his journal, so we found his little scribblers down with them, trunks full, and that's what my dad based the book on. And indeed, it was his work that brought the psychic journals and, and the research journals into our house very early. He was into it. My grandfather was a Bell Telephone engineer. He was into it. My dad was a road engineer, a civil engineer. So they dealt in numbers and tangents and angles and joules and gigajoules and megawatts. They were men of science, and uh, they saw that there was something beyond the physical world in the invisible world we can't explain and wanted to make inquiry. That's why we're all here today, because my, you know, my great-grandfather, Sam. Thank you, Sam Ackroyd. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the book and the journaling and such, and also in the foreword, you mentioned how the legacy of the family creates like a, a long shadow, and it passes down through generations, but towards the end of the shadow, it starts to sort of fade away. So does this interest in the paranormal, does it, in your family, in the Ackroyds, does it stop with you, or your kids, have they picked up the ball as well? Well, I don't think they're going to go into it professionally. Uh, they're not going to uh, start a ghost hunting society, but certainly 
um, you know, they're interested and, and will we'll make inquiry, but they're on other career ideas and career paths. Um, for a while there, we'd take pictures of Stella, our youngest child, and there were little blobs of light we couldn't explain in there. You know, orbs, you know the orb phenomenon is quite spectacular what's going on there. You have Polaroids and you have digital photos with, with globs of light around war memorials and hospitals and stuff. And, uh, you know, the Travel Entertainment Channel really treats hauntings well and they talk about the orbs. And those are spirits just kind of poke through trying to contact us, you know, and they're appealing. They want to, they want to be, uh, they want to be with us again. So with spirit communication, especially within a family or people that are, uh, you know, very close one way or another. Well, twins are telepathic. Many, many twins are telepathic. We just, we know this. Yeah. Which is what's my question going to be to you. Do you believe that any of this information that started with your grandfather may have been transmitted to you telepathically? I don't think so, no. It was mainly just all the publications were there. He was subscribed to the American Society for Psychical Research Journals. We knew about his, his, uh, his stories, and my dad talked about the seances. And, uh, you know, so that tradition was passed down. The seances continued well into the 19, uh, late 40s. And um, we had our own medium, Walter Ashurst. He was a locomotive mechanic. He walked up to my great-grandfather one day and said, I think I have a gift. He became the family medium. And every Sunday, these big black Dodges and Packards and <laughs> Cadillacs would roll into the farmhouse and the women would come out, matrons, you know, dressed like Margaret Dumont. <laughs> and the husbands, and they'd roll in there. And my grand great-grandfather would sit and he was the impresario. And it was a show for 90 minutes, an hour and a half seance. And Walter, would go into full, open, gaping mouth uh, trances. He would transform his body if he was channeling someone that uh, was completely foreign. He'd speak in foreign tongues, and he was very effective. And so it was mainly that. It was the seances. It was the books that we, we were uh, reading all the time, the fake magazine. And, and just that, uh, you know, here I have my grandfather talking about it, my father talking about it. Of course, I'm going to read. So the belief was passed down that way, you know, just from orally and... Uh, and also hearing stories, my mother uh, was nursing me at one year old in the farmhouse. No, I was like one month old. Uh, and uh, she, she kind of woke up out of a sleep and then looked up and there were two people standing at the edge of the bed and she cried out to my father. And the images vanished and she described them to my father and he said, oh, that's, that's Dr. Sam Aykroyd and his wife, Ellen Jane Wemp. I mean, that's, you know, they're, they're, they're coming to welcome the child. And he showed her a picture in one of the family journals and so she said, that's them, yeah. And my mother was, you know, not, not, you know, she was not made to be a believer. She was a pretty tough French-Canadian Catholic skeptic, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs>